Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 15, Part 3 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue to discuss God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, focusing this session on the feelings, emotions, and responses God has generally has towards sin itself, and has when his children choose to sincerely forgive and repent. The session was recorded on the 5th of June 2018 from 10.30 a.m. in Wilsdale, Queensland, Australia. Okay, well, we're back. I needed to go and have a bit of a cry about some of the stuff we were talking about then. Mm. <laughs> it's pretty powerful discussion, I feel, um, about the way that God feels and mm. the different choices as well. I reflect a lot on choices and Yeah, yeah. I think I think it just as an aside now, it's 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 so important for us to to at least to be to be at least told intellectually that God feels a certain way even though we might not know that emotionally mm. because we can't feel God or feel mm. God's emotions because at least that opens us up to the possibility mm. doesn't it of God having feelings and God having feelings for us and God wanting to know what our feelings are and actually wanting to feel those feelings from us so that there is a relationship established mm. and it, it sort of seems to me that most people on earth is so distant and also in a lot of the spirit world is so distant from god that they can't even contemplate that god wants to share you know experiences with them mm. and and it seems to me that this whole uh you know the discussion that we need to have and, and as i said in the discussion you know obviously if we had the relationship with god we'd know these things and feel these things but mm. But most of us don't have a relationship with God yet, so so we need to be told that this is how God is mm. to at least can contemplate God's goodness mm. and desires, so that we can at least contemplate, you know, that we we can at least examine whether it is much of a risk, in fact, to have a relationship with God <laughs> as we think it is, you yeah. know, because because the reality is it's not mm. risk at all. In fact, the only risks come from having not having one really. Mm. Um, but, you know, the, and these are the things we need, I feel, to understand. So having an intellectual conversation about God's emotions, which is really what we're trying to do mm. here, um, it has, it has benefits because it opens us up to the possibility of feeling those emotions mm. with God. And I feel that's an essential part of the discussion. Yeah, yeah. I mm. feel so too. Mm. And I feel if we allow it, it can open us up emotionally to the contrast between what we feel about the, the potential relationship and what the relationship actually entails. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and as we've discussed in the Forgiveness and Repentance series a lot, it, you know, what, who's, whose rules do we use when it comes to, you know, working out what we've done wrong or what others have done wrong? Mm. It's God's rules. Mm. Now, obviously, if we've got a personal, you know, relationship with God, then we can feel what God's rules are, you mm. know, what, what God's opinion is about all of these matters and what love would dictate on all of these matters because we can feel what God's feeling about mm. these matters. And that's going to make it a lot easier to engage forgiveness and repentance than it, than it is if we just, like, you know, wandering around in the dark, yeah. uh, wondering what is right and what is wrong. Yeah. It's a lot easier if you can connect directly to God. But of course, we're not going to correct directly to God, connect directly to God, if we have this uh, underly uh, underlying understanding of God, that God's somehow cruel, wrathful, mm. judgmental, condescending and so forth, yes. uh, which, which is what a lot of our parents are like. But, yeah. but we're, not, we're not going to have that uh, concept of God and so therefore we're probably not going to even attempt to risk the relationship, relationship. with God yeah. and it feels to me a lot of the times that what we're doing is we're we're basically saying to ourselves that we cannot contemplate that God is good mm. and as a result of not being able to contemplate that God is good we cannot contemplate a relationship with God. Mm. And as soon as we go down that track, we now preclude ourselves from understanding what is right and what is wrong simply mm. 
And now we have to go through a process of discovery of what is right and what is wrong through this, uh, the laws of compensation telling us through the pain and suffering and pleasure and the pleasure plane responses that we have. Yes. And, and uh, that is a long winded, time consuming and quite often, you know, demoralizing mm. sort of a process as mm. any spirit who goes through that process after they pass will tell you as well. And, it, you know, it seems to be that it could all be avoided, but it, it's not avoided on earth because we have so many distorted opinions of God that we need to at least begin to be told intellectually, no, this is what God is like. Mm -hmm. Even before we begin to emotionally experience God, we need to at least somebody to say, no, God's not like that. Mm -hmm. God's, God's not this cruel, angry, wrathful, destructive, you know, ego, ma ma maniacal being mm -hmm. that, that the religious leaders of this planet generally portray God to be. And, and certainly the Bible and other holy books portray God to be. And, and we need to in, make sure that, you know, we get away, at least intellectually get away in the beginning from that definition of God, because otherwise we're never going to even concern ourselves with developing or experimenting with a relationship with God. Yeah. yeah. So I feel the intellectual part of this discussion, even though it's something that you won't do when you emotionally connect to God, you know, because you can feel these mm. things about God. It is an essential part of, of people becoming aware of the repentance and forgiveness process and, and how God is involved in those processes. Yeah. Yes, because really what our discussion so far has demonstrated is like the, the immense love that God, that God has for us and how that, I feel that can open us, as you mentioned, to having a relationship with God, but also to coming to view these processes of forgiveness and repentance as worthwhile and safe, risk-free, um, something to be engaged mm. with someone who's very mm. interested in my personal welfare as well as mm. my happiness. Yeah. yeah, and he's not interested in your personal welfare either to the, to the exclusion of others' welfare. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, which which is of course just you know mm. and he's not interested in others welfare to the exclusion of yours mm. and that's also very important because most parents are usually fa pray favorites with one or more of their children so you know when we talk about god being a parent and having children and we're being his children we often relate it all to our upbringing and and for most of us our upbringing from god's perspective is quite highly distorted when mm. it comes to love and so naturally we're going to have some poor opinions of the capacity of god to experience and and receive our love yeah. so uh, you know we need we need to correct those even intellectual belief systems before somebody is going to attempt to work through those belief systems emotionally emotionally mm. yeah yeah mm. okay well let's move on mm. Mm. how god feels about sin so we've been working through this discussion, talking about lots of different ways that God feels about mm -hmm. us. Um, it's pretty obvious now that God has feelings and emotions uh, and that we can feel those feelings and emotions when we have a relationship with God. So uh, we've touched on our choices and our decisions. Let's now become more specific and talk about our choices and decisions to sin mm. and how God feels about those. Mm. Um, and of perhaps, here instead of, to... perhaps here, instead of saying how God feels about sin, it'd probably be more correct to say God's emotions about sin. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about how God feels about sin generally, it's probably good to say it's God's emotions about sin generally. What are God's emotions about sin generally and how God feels when I sin? What are God's emotions when I sin? You know, how do, what, what is his emotional response to my sin? Yeah. And, and, and I think we need to sort of probably portray it that way and we'll read yeah. this outline so that yeah. it's like that. Um, so that people get to see the difference between the sensory process of feeling mm. uh, and the emotional process of feeling. Yeah. Uh, which are really quite different processes in a way. One, mm. one involves uh, physical uh, sensations, if you like, yeah. whereas the other involves emotional responses. And God does have physical sensations and emotional responses mm. to our sin. Mm. Um, obviously, though, they don't harm God. Mm. So that's the thing yeah. we need to remember. Yeah, you and I, we use, we use the terms a little bit 
interchangeably in our general in our recordings. And yeah. so we probably need to be a bit more, bit more specific, specific maybe. Specific about mm. that, yeah. Mm. Of course, there's always the truth that for us humans, when we experience an emotion, there's usually a physical sensation that goes with it. Of and course. then it gets... Yeah. yeah, of course. Anyway, let's just revise what sin is because mm -hmm. we've done that in this series, but it's quite relevant now. Yes, yes. So sin is, we've said it's any word, thought, deed, <laughs> sort of... Um, desire. Desire, intention. Intention. Uh, Which we're emotion, all putting together as behaviour. Behaviour. So it's any behaviour which is behavior. inclusive of all of those things mm -hmm. um, that's in disharmony with God's laws, whether those laws are physical or spiritual in nature, mm -hmm. emotional, moral, ethical, all of God's laws uh, operate under certain principles that we've talked about. Yeah. And any if, if we have any behaviour in disharmony with the way that those laws operate, which is all guided by love, yeah. then, then we sin. are sin, yeah, sinning. Sin. Yeah. sin is a nice, simple three-letter word, isn't it? <laughs> yes, to for all of that very... quite a complex yes. <laughs> process yeah, yeah. and situation. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so, so we'll move on now. I'm going to ask you a series of questions about God's emotions about sin. Yeah, good way. All right. God's emotions about sin generally. So how does God feel about it, sin, our sin, our thoughts, our words, our actions, our emotions that are in disharmony with God's principles and laws? Uh, is God frustrated about our sin and the consequences of our sin? Because obviously there's lots of consequences to our sin as well. Yeah, so you see, uh, and this is where I find it quite interesting because most of the holy books on the planet that refer to a individual God, you know, just a, a one God sort of uh, concept, all refer to God basically as having this sort of feeling of frustration and annoyance and anger and wrath about our choices and decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, I find that quite ironic in a way because it almost states that he, he created all of these, you know, in his omniscience and his, and his omnipotence, mm -hmm. he, he created this you know universe and then he created a whole series of laws that are going to make him upset yeah. <laughs> as if that's going to happen right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so it doesn't make much sense that uh, you know god's going to be frustrated or upset mm. by the fact that we're making choices to sin mm. of course uh, you know so if you consider it god designed the human soul to be a free thinking free acting being and obviously the human soul also has consequences to bear responsibility for that its cho choice of decisions. But God made uh, the human soul also responsible for mm -hmm. the choice and decisions. In other words, it's got to bear the consequences of its choices and decisions. So mm -hmm. when, when we desire to sin, uh, when the humans desire to sin, the way God sees sin is why well, you've desired to sin. It is a creation of yours. Mm -hmm. I, I never created sin. God, God never created sin. Humans create sin. Humans mm -hmm. create sin by disobeying, disobeying God's laws in some way in their thoughts, words, actions or deeds mm -hmm. or intentions and desires. So, so God doesn't do that. So God never created sin. It, sin is a human construct. Yeah. Uh, and That's the, the potential for which is, is enabled from us having the gift of free will. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's only, uh, God only created the potential for us to sin. Mm -hmm. and, and that potential could never be realized mm. you know we could mm -hmm. never sin we could actually be engaged in no sin whatsoever but but the fact is that no, unfortunately most of us do engage sin in some way because we want to you know and yeah. the reality true is also that a perfect human being can want to sin yes you know that that is the reality too we're allowed to choose that if that's what we so desire mm. so so god's not disappointed in god's creation god's going it's a wonderful thing that I created the ability for you to make choices of your own yeah. and to bear the consequences of those choices, whatever they be. If yeah. they are painful and uh, pain and suffering, well, that's the result of your choices. If they're pleasurable and, and enjoyable, well, that's also the result of your choices. Isn't it wonderful mm -hmm. in each direction that you can see the consequences of the decisions and choices you make? Mm. So, so God is definitely not frustrated about the human choosing sin mm. and God is definitely not frustrated about sin generally Yeah, in the sense that God always knew that there was the possibility that we would, through our choices and decisions, 
uh, have the desire to create pain and suffering for mm. ourselves. Mm. Uh, and God always knew that was a decision that we might make. And God created the possibility for that decision because, and, and one main reason why is that if he didn't create the possibility of that decision, then we are no longer free thinking, free feeling beings yeah. anymore. Yeah. We needed to have the possibility of any decision, yes. not just the decisions God wanted us to have. Yes. Right. So, yeah. so while God wants us to not sin, yes. right, and has deep desires to, for us to not sin, and has created a whole heap of laws to help us not, not sin, sin, and has also created a whole heap of laws to help us recover from sin, mm -hmm. he is not going to prevent us from sinning. Yeah. He is not going to tr stop us from sinning. So this whole concept that's a Christian concept that somehow Jesus will come down with his heavenly angels and get rid of all the sinners so that everyone who's left doesn't sin yeah. um, is, a, is a flawed concept in the beginning because it, that would indicate that God had somehow flawed and was flawed in his design of mm. the universe mm. and design of the human and design of his laws. And, that, and that's, none of that is the case. Mm. So. So then the question becomes, well, how does God actually feel about the sin itself? Yes. You know, so so while God is OK and, and quite content with the fact that we are able to choose sin. Yes. God does not desire us to choose sin mm. and also feels a number of feelings about our sin mm -hmm. and, and what its consequences are. Mm -hmm. And he knows that, you know, we can engage unloving behavior if that's what we desire. But he has even prevented us from engaging unloving behaviour to the extreme of complete self-annihilation. Yes. So, so the beauty of what he has constructed is that he's allowed us to make these very, very unloving decisions and choices mm -hmm. that are all the result of our desire to sin. Mm -hmm. But he has, he has also stopped us from ever going so far that we can no longer exist. Yes. Right. And and that is a very loving provision that he has made for us. Yes. And if you think it's quite a perfect design, he has allowed us to go to the extent of really uh, like a lot of self-destruction mm -hmm. without complete self-annihilation. Yes. And and this uh, this means that we can still bear the consequence of our decisions and choices mm -hmm. without ever going so far that we no longer exist. Yes. And, and, yeah. and so that's a really loving provision. So the pain and suffering that we experience as a result of our sin will never be to the point of our annihilation. Correct. Yeah. And we can always recover from it. Now, mm -hmm. this is a very... So this is the opposite of the Christian belief of hell or torment, mm. where, you know, a person who's sinned extremely against God or against humanity, you know, says they're going to be forever eternally suffering, damned. eternally damned, <laughs> yeah. forever suffering. And this is obviously contrary to anything that God would ever conceive yeah. uh, because God's love would prevent the conception of such a thing. And, and God has never created such a thing because God doesn't need to. God's created a life and an experience on this planet and the laws that prevent us from ever going to this point where we'd be forever tortured yes. and 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 we will always got, got the ability to recover from that place mm. so while god is allowing us to degrade ourselves to extreme conditions he 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 has prevented us from going to complete self annihilation and he's also prevented us from being in a state where it's hopeless, yeah, where where our condition now is unrecoverable, mm. uh, and he he has provided methods for the recovery, yes. which you would expect a perfect being to do, given the mm. fact that he knew that we would potentially go into a place of absolutely like self destruction. It's a wicked design, isn't it? That's like, right. As in, wicked as in awesome. Yeah, yeah. it's an awesome design. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a it's a it's a powerful proof that God has given a lot of thought yes. to the fact of what we would do with our free will. Yeah. Right. So, so that's all for, potentials are covered all potentials. and there's always a loving outcome. That's right. And yeah. eventually, given enough time, mm -hmm. there will probably be a loving outcome for every person. For every person. Yeah. yeah. And, and highly, it's impossible for there not to be given yeah. the law. Yes. So, so, you know, this is a powerful thing that God has done, given us the experience of allowing 
ourselves to make in individual choices of wide variety of an almost infinite variety mm. uh, without actually ever going to a place where we completely don't exist yeah. and also without going into a place where we can't recover. Yes. And, and so we need to state that up front. Excellent. All right. So how does God feel about sin generally? Firstly, yep. will God see sin as a human creation? Yes. And you've already sort of discussed that, haven't you? Yeah. And we've talked about that. Um, and we'll talk about that a lot in our next assistance groups that we do yes. about understanding sin. Uh, you know that it is a human creation why it's a human creation that uh, that god never created sin and mm -hmm. and does not agree with its creation in fact and uh and obviously feels that humans should not have created sin mm -hmm. but but he knew they probably possibly would given yeah. the fact that they had free will and yeah. the desire to experience free will mm. so so while he knew uh would prefer to see humans not create sin he has created all of these laws and mechanisms to recover from it yeah. because he knew that it would probably happen mm -hmm. given the fact that humans had free will and, and given the fact that they had almost an infinite amount of possible choices that mm -hmm. they could make. Mm -hmm. The other thing he feels is that sin can only be prevented by the human and recovered by, from the, hu by the human. Yes. Right. So, so in other words, he, because sin is a human creation, God, God, being the God he is, says, right, all humans are responsible for their creations. God can't remove sin without human participation. Mm -hmm. And God has purposefully made it that way so that humans are involved in the understanding of their sin. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's a part of enforcing self-responsibility, isn't it? It is, yeah. but it's also a part of uh, coming to understand the destructive results of poor choices. Mm. You know, if, if, if a person could make a poor choice, uh, a destructive choice, an evil choice, and then have all of the results of their destructive choice removed without them having had to have any involvement in that process, then they were highly likely just engage the same destructive choice again. Yes. And, you know, obviously that doesn't make any sense to create a system like that. No. So, so taking away a person, the results or the consequences of a person's sin would be a highly like illogical and unreasonable and irrational thing to do, mm -hmm. given the fact that the person has free will. They could just go and sin again yeah. without there being consequence. Um, there needs to be consequences. And, and so you know, sin, and, and one of the consequences is that you have to destroy your own sins. Mm. And you have to get rid of your own sins. And, and so sin can only be prevented by the human. Now, God will assist the process of the destruction of sin, mm -hmm. but he's not going to start, start it himself, mm. and he's not going to complete it himself. He's going to make sure that the human is involved every step of the way. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's not just enforcing self-responsibility. God's enforcing this education process about free will and yes. its consequences. Yes, and this is a very important part of this. It's like understanding the way we use our will and its effects because it can have very, very positive mm. effects and it mm. can also have very, very negative effects. Mm -hmm. And understanding the use of desire and intention yeah. in a positive and negative way yeah. is very, very important very. for us as humans in terms of our understanding and our future existence. It's one of the biggest things that I feel God wants us to, because by understanding that, it enables every other gift that God has available to us. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. very important. The third thing we need to understand is that the results of the sin are experienced emotionally by the human. Yeah. Now, if that wasn't the case, then, you, you know, and you just had to go, oh, oh, yeah, I did sin. And oh, yeah, that was the result. Who cares? Because you don't feel anything. Yeah. Uh, you have to feel something usually to care. Yes. And, and God wants us to care about what we do. Mm -hmm. So we have to feel things about what we do. Mm -hmm. Now, what God wants us to care about what we do in a positive uh, direction, in a loving direction, as well as in an unloving one. Mm -hmm. In the positive direction, he wants us to feel the happiness and joy that we experience when we do something positively. Mm -hmm. But in an in a opposite way, when we do something that's unloving, he also wants us to feel the pain and suffering that we created uh, uh, for ourselves and others. Yes. Because it's very important we feel that, because then we'll care. Yeah. And when we care, we'll change. Yeah. And if we don't care, we'll never change. Yeah. And he knows that he needs to help us care about what we do. Yes. Right. He cares and he wants us to care yeah. about what we do. Yeah. So this is indication that he cares about what we do. Yes. He does. He is concerned about what we do. Mm -hmm. he, he, do he doesn't worry about it because he, he doesn't need to. He knows that sooner or later it will all be corrected. 
but he does care about how long it takes us to sort out what we do too. Yeah. He wants it to be as soon as possible rather yeah. than as long as it possibly can. Yeah. All right. So he still remains, though, personally happy with his design of the laws that govern the soul and the soul itself. And he, he remains personally happy with the design of the soul because it's all working perfectly. Yes. Even though we're experiencing pain and suffering, the pain and suffering is the result of our sin and not the result of the, the anything unloving that God has done. Mm -hmm. It's the result of our unloving choice. Mm -hmm. right? and, and this is the beauty of the system is that it reflects back to us our choice yeah and and it needs to reflect back to us our choice yeah. if we are free thinking free feeling responsible beings yeah. we need to be responsible for our choices yeah because otherwise our choices could impact a huge amount of our environment and other people other human souls and we don't care about our choices mm. we need to personally care mm -hmm. about our choices god cares mm -hmm. but he, he wants us to come to the realization that we need to care yeah about our choices and, and the only way you can do that is through the laws and through the response of uh, and the design of the human soul yeah. so he's very happy with his design yes it works <laughs> it works <laughs> so he's also happy with the fact that we ex exercise our will and desires you know he, he's happy that we do that because that's what he designed us to do mm -hmm. he designed us to experience our will and work out things about our will and come to realizations about our will and he also and also how to change our will and he also wants to us to look at our desires our future intentions what we want to do in the future and consider ah here i have a desire is this desire going to be is this desire going to be for my benefit yeah or or is this desire is going to be you know another thing that destroys you know something or harms something yeah. he, he wants us to consider to to remember our past so we can consider our future yeah. he wants us to consider the effects of the past and the and our poor decision making process our loving decision making processes and consider do you want to keep making that same decision for your future mm. he wants all that to happen and without the ways designed the human soul that can't happen yeah so so he's very happy that we're exercising will and desire and no matter how it's actually expressed yes he's happy with that yes yep he doesn't get angry and frustrated about the fact that we want to sin mm. Because he created us with the ability to sin. Yep. He's not going to then go, oh, you stupid, you know, I throw yeah. up his arms all the time about the fact that we do. Yeah. You know, he, he is okay with the fact that we desire to sin if that's what we desire to do. When I say okay, he knows that it's a part of the possibilities of what we may choose. Mm. He does not like our sin. Mm. In fact, um, it would be correct to say that if there is anything God dislikes, it is our sin. Yeah. The reason why he dislikes it, and, and in fact, when you connect to God, you can feel his dislike of mm -hmm. our sin. Mm -hmm. You can feel why he dislikes it too, because it damages us and damages others and harms happiness. Yeah. It, it impacts upon the environment. It impacts upon our personal experience and the experience of others mm. in a negative way. It's not good for us. Mm. So, so while he's okay that we choose it, mm -hmm. he doesn't like that we do the sin itself that's right and uh, but god sees that all those negative things that happen are a natural consequence of the sin and as our personal creations and things that we have created within the universe mm -hmm. but god is not happy that we're doing that well you could say that he dislikes the fact that we desire to do that and he and he dislikes the consequences of it in the sense that yeah. so 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 his personal feelings are different to what he makes us feel about it it would be best way of saying it in other words he has personal feelings about our desire to sin mm -hmm. but but he doesn't force those personal feelings by punishment or through yeah. some angry or wrathful experience that we then have to experience yeah. as a result of our actions. Yes. So he's not like a parent who goes, I'm unhappy, so now you're going to be. Mm. I'm going to make you unhappy. Mm. That's not what he does. Mm. He doesn't try to make us unhappy mm. because we've sinned. He knows that we're going to be unhappy because we sin, because that's the consequence of sin. That's yeah. what it generates. And I think that's interesting what you're saying there, because most of us associate <laughs> So say I'm an individual, I can like something and dislike something. That's right, and God can too. And, and 
And that's essentially what you're saying about God. God can like something and be pleased with something and then say, that doesn't please me. I don't me. care for that. I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> no. um, but a lot of us become confused about that because most people that we encounter, when they don't care for something or dislike something, they do have a negative emotional response that they enforce, uh, that they impose upon the environment. Well, they try to punish that thing. They yes. try to harm that thing and attack that thing. Yes. Right. And, That's and not what God Many do. of us associate dislike like. or lack of pleasure with that additional unloving action that many people on earth take. Which is a desire to harm. Yes. So, so while God dislikes our sin, mm -hmm. he doesn't try to harm us because we sinned. Yes. Yes. Right. And there is a common feeling amongst religious faiths that he does. You know, mm. and it's often because of the law of compensation at work. You know, yeah. it's the effect of sin is that we're going to have pain and suffering that we caused. But yeah. but many people want to blame God for the cause of it. Yes. And and it's not it's not God who caused it. We caused it by choosing to sin. Yes. Right. God established the law that shows us the damage of the sin and what it does. Yeah. And that is an essential part of what he created. He had to create that in order to demonstrate to us that sin has negative consequences mm -hmm. on the universe mm -hmm. and on our people and ourselves. Mm -hmm. He had to do that. So, so he did that out of love for us, actually, to, yeah. to place limits upon how far we can go yes. in terms of the harm that we create to ourselves and others. Yes. Yep. Go ahead. Finish. I just wanted to clarify yep. that, um, that uh, I just think this is a really important point that a, a person, an entity, can be so an entity like God or a, a loving person, entity, a loving entity, can have dislikes, can yes, <laughs> can can lack pleasure about some things and still remain loving and still remain happy and still remain happy. It's mm. like saying, I like um, oranges, but I dislike apples. I, I, and I can still be perfectly loving and perfectly happy and just dislike something. Yes. And most people, I don't think, understand that. It's but that the is... judgmental condescension and the attacking, belittling and, and violent emotions that are attached to dislike yes. that God doesn't have. That's right. Yes. Yeah, awesome. and, and, and humans do because yeah. of other emotional conditions. Yeah. Often we try to control what we don't like or yeah. we try to influence what we don't like or we try to get rid of what we don't like mm -hmm. or whatever. And well, God doesn't need to do yeah. all of those things because he, or the laws already do all those things for him anyway. But Even just judge and reject what we don't like. That's right. Yeah. And God doesn't do that either. Mm -hmm. You know, God accepts that, no, that was a natural consequence of his desire to give us the gift of free will. Yeah. He's not going to take away the gift of free will no. just because we chose sin. Or punish us or judge us, but God can just say, I, that doesn't bring me any pleasure. That's right. I don't it doesn't like bring that. me any pleasure. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't like it when you do it. Yeah. And if you are connected to God by the conscience, you will, uh, you will feel, you feel God's dislike yeah. of what you do for yeah. cert certain. Yeah. But see, frequently, why we don't want to connect to the conscience in that way because we then feel a whole heap of judgment and all, all the other negative things that we often felt from our family or our mm -hmm. parents. Oh, and we have a deep fear of God's rage, which doesn't actually exist because we actually fear our parents' rage, hmm. which did exist. And so, but you just said there, when we connect to the conscience, we can feel those things, but that's not coming from God. No, so God will give us the feeling of dislike, and yes. then we associate all of these other feelings, yep. punishment, uh, attack, abuse, mm -hmm. with that feeling of dislike, because that's yep. the experience we had with our parents. Yes. And, and that's, of course, not the feeling God has. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. Excellent. Now, God also doesn't feel like just rubbing out the human race mm -hmm. because the human race sins. You know, uh, it, there's this very strong uh, feeling in the, in the Bible, particularly in other holy books that, uh, so-called holy books, but um, that, you know, that God's going to delete all those who sin. Mm. Why? Mm. But God's going to correct all those who sin. Yeah. Uh, and to delete all those that sin would be actually an, an admittance of God's uh, failure to create laws and a universe that actually works harmoniously mm. to delete those who sin. Mm. So this whole concept that's in the, contained in the book of Revelation and some of the gospel accounts too, that Jesus is going to come and, and destroy the wicked and get rid of all the sinners and yep. and so forth, you know, all those who are unrepentant and all that. No, that doesn't need to happen because the laws of compensation 
sort out the unrepentant. Yes. Uh, the law does it automatically over a long period of time sometimes, but it does it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's no need for God to delete the human race. And in fact, it, it, for God to delete one of his children would be a trauma for God to do. You know, he'd never mm -hmm. contemplate doing it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to do that also, it would also, if, if it ever was a possibility even, it would be an indication that God is not God. Yeah. And, and so, you know, of course, it's not going to ever happen. It never will. Mm -hmm. And and any expectation that it will is just a human endeavor to, you know, have God correct things that you want to see corrected yeah. without understanding God's system of things, you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 All right. And God knows that God's laws will eventually, as I said, correct the human desire to sin, you know, because given long enough, we sin enough and we have enough pain and suffering. And sooner or later, we start seeing the relationship between the pain and suffering we're creating in our own lives and the lives of others and the sin we committed. Yeah. And once we start seeing that relationship, we start seeing the need to not sin anymore. Mm -hmm. And once we start doing that and we start to look at the reason why we sin, which is addressing the causes, sooner or later we're going to get rid of the cause for sin yeah. and therefore not sin. Yeah. And so that's uh, that God knows that God's laws are going to have this lovely process of removing sin from us in the long run anyway. Mm. It's just how long do we want to take? How much pain do we want to have? That's yeah. really, but again, that's a human choice. Mm -hmm. How much pain do you want to have is your choice. How, mm -hmm. how long do you want to take? That's your choice too. Mm. So, you know, you can, you can make those kind of decisions. But I must say, like we've already said, that God is in complete disagreement and dislike of our sin. Yeah. There is no, he cannot agree with our sin under any circumstances, no matter how much fear we have. He does not agree with our sin mm. and he dislikes our sin because he understands completely its consequences. And by the way, once we understand its consequences, we'll dislike it too. <laughs> yeah. We will. Yeah. 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 So that's okay. how God feels about sin generally. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how God feels when I sin. Hmm. So now we want to refine our discussion a bit. We've talked about how God feels about sin generally. Now I'd like to ask you, is God angry, resentful, condescending, wrath, wrathful, attacking or punishing when I sin? Um, and if not, then what does God feel about me personally when I sin? Yeah, well, that's uh, again, is a good comparison with a human parent, isn't it? Like here, because we, uh, an average human parent will go, when, we, when they perceive themselves to be sinned against by their child, the average human parent does react angrily and mm. wrathfully and in a punishing way. They want to punish the, and they'll often resort even to violence mm. uh, in order to re-establish the power over the child mm. and in order to get, correct the child's decision, right? So, so the fact is that, that the human choice or response to sin uh, even when it's imagined, unfortunately, mm. you know, because a lot of a lot of times parents imagine the child's committed sin when they haven't. Yeah. But even when it's imagined, a it range from anywhere from condescension to and ridicule right the way through to absolute you know, horrendous violence, mm. and even in many cases to the point of death. You mm. know, many parents even to this day, yeah. uh, for religious and other reasons, will actually kill their child if they commit yeah. certain so-called sins. Yes. So. You know, that's a parent's, that's, that's how parents respond. Yeah. You know, there's a vast range of responses in parents. Now, obviously, the parental response to the child doing something that the parent disagrees with, uh, whether that's a sin or not, um, is going to have a large impact upon how the parent, how the child sees God's response will probably mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. And, I, and we've, so we've got to make this clear statement, don't we? that God does not respond this way to your sin. Yeah. God is not going to punish you for your sin. He recognizes the sin itself has its own punishment. Yes. You know, it does. It's a, the laws the are laws already are operational yeah. and the pain and suffering that you're going to experience because you sinned are already punishment enough. Mm. He doesn't he doesn't need to add to your trauma mm. because you sin because the sin itself creates the trauma. Yes. Uh, like the sin itself is the creator of the trauma. Yes. So, so, so he doesn't need to do more. He, 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 you know, he's just going to make you responsible for the trauma for the trauma you created. That's yeah. all. And and he so he, and he's not disappointed with his system. Mm. He he he's not angry and frustrated that he has no control of you because in the long run, 
he, he, there is no anarchy in his universe. He yeah. has laws that govern the entire of his universe. Everything is in control, even when you sin. Everything is still in control. Mm. The sin itself creates your punishment. Mm -hmm. There's the control. Yeah. Sooner or later, there'll be enough punishment, enough pain and suffering from your sin that you'll stop doing mm. it because yeah, you'll want to. Mm. And, and that'll be great when you do that. God knows that is going to happen. Mm. There's no need for him to be angry and resentful now about what you've chosen to do. Yeah. yeah. So th this is the first thing. It's a, it's a clear statement of God's feelings about the whole issue about right. personal sin yeah. yeah so we've listed a whole heap of notes would you like me to read yeah. them and then you can respond to them yeah, sure so god has compassion so this is how god feels when i sin instead of wrathful <laughs> yeah instead of wrathful um god has compassion for me and compassion for the fact that i've just caused my own pain and suffering yes so can we talk about that a little? Because so that, that's pretty kind, isn't it? It's sort of it, like, it he is. could just say, no, you deserved it. <laughs> Couldn't he? But instead of saying, he, he knows you deserved it because yeah. the law obviously gets, the sin gets its just deserved. Yes. Uh, whatever it deserves. Mm. But, but he doesn't say that or feel that. He goes, no, it's pretty sad that you've chosen to harm yourself and others of my children here mm. and the environment because of your sin. It's pretty sad and, and has compassion for the fact that we like what so while he's not sad mm. he feels it's sad for us mm. you know sad for the fact that we've done that and chosen that and that we could have chosen differently but we didn't yeah you know so there's also the feeling that yeah you're going to regret god knows you're going to regret your choice mm. sooner or later mm. Mm. yeah so god doesn't agree with my choice to sin and feels strongly that i could be making better choices yep God's firm about his disagreement with my choice and will never support my choice. He created the laws that enforce my pain and suffering. Yes. He, he even goes so far as to never support your justification of your choice. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, most so, sin is justified somehow by people on earth, you know. Well, most sin is strongly justified, yeah, I would so, say. Yeah, so like you engage it because you have your, what you believe is a worthwhile a justification for engaging yeah. it, even if that's a personal selfish desire, yeah. being satisfied or, or yeah. you know, or just preventing some fear, which is common, yes. you know, or that, you you know, you're angry, so you did it or whatever. And, yeah. yeah. um, you know, we always come up with many justifications and minimizations and, and personal, you know, shifting yeah. the blame of sin and everything else. Yeah. God doesn't support any of that, no. but he also doesn't support the underlying motivation to do that even. So yeah. he doesn't even, he, so he doesn't, he strongly disagrees with your motive to minimize the sin mm. and your motive to justify the sin mm. and your motive to shift the blame. So you'll notice in my discussions with people yes. historically, when people start justifying their sin, and, and I, I, I'm quite firm with them, mm -hmm. very strong in my disagreement with them yes. uh, in, in public and, yeah. and in private. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I am is because I know that's why our God feels. Yeah. You know, that's how God is with that with the person doing that. Yeah. 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 And so you know, notice when a person gets in their back up and they start justifying their behavior, mm -hmm. I'm pretty firm with them now. And I, get, and I yes. use pretty strong, firm language as well to get them to see no this is this is way out of line now from mm. god's perspective yeah because it's almost as if i mentioned earlier about god really wanting us to understand this gift of free will mm. as soon as we justify sin we're really saying i had no other choice but to use my free will in this way yeah and so it's almost <laughs> negating that learning process it's going against what god wants us to see that in every choice in every situation we have a choice exactly to sin or not sin exactly yeah. exactly yeah. and in every situation we have a choice to uh, engage our addictions or to to deny them mm. we have a choice you know we have we have loving choice or an unloving one mm. basically almost every decision we ever make mm. we can make a loving one a loving one, and an unloving one it's like you know, and a lot of it involves things, even just natural things like food or clothing or shelter or any. We, we have the ability to make loving choices or unloving ones. Mm -hmm. and, and frequently we make unloving ones mm. and we don't do anything about it. And it's our desire to not do anything about it that is really a problem from God's perspective. Yeah. You know, and he's going to be pretty, re you know, resistive and strongly uh, suggesting to us 
that no, you're way out of line, not even wanting to care about this situation. I, only, I want you to care about this situation, yes. care about the fact that you sin, care about the fact that you created something, care about the fact that you had your, created your own pain, even. Mm. care about the fact that you're responsible for it, mm. care about the fact that you're responsible for other people's pain when you do things to them. And, and God's not going to mince any words there with you about it through the conscience. He's not. Mm. And, and you'll notice in situations where I get into that situation with people that have been, you know, that have been recorded, mm -hmm. I don't mince any words about it either. Mm. And, that, and the reason why I don't is because I can't, because God doesn't. Yeah. And this is why in the, in the Bible, for instance, in the first century, there's recordings of me saying that the scribes and Pharisees were hypocrite and full of dead mm -hmm. men's bones, you know, like yeah. graves full of dead men's bones, you know, where the outside was all painted white, but inside they're just full of corruption. Mm -hmm. And these kind of statements were made specifically because this is how God feels. Mm. This is how God, God dislikes these particular things and dislikes them intensely. Mm. Right? And he's allowed to have these feelings that he does have. He doesn't punish a person for the way, you know, God feels about it. No, but there's nothing um, wishy-washy. I, Not I, I sort of find that a lot of the world's definition of love is a bit... Um, there's often this facade associated with love, which is like, ah, oh, darling, you know, it's okay. And, you know, it'll be all right. And I understand. And whereas God's like real love is saying, I totally accept you. I'm not judging you. But, but what you're doing, what is, you're doing so is blatantly wrong. Is wrong and, and hurtful, hurtful and harmful. And, harmful. and, and, and you've there's got to no stop it dispute about it. Because you're going to be it. causing pain for you and a lot of yes. other people. And until you face that, you will continue to. So any loving action must bring about the confrontation mm -hmm. between truth and error. That, mm. That's the way love is. And, yeah. and this is, again, a common misconception about yeah. the way God must be. Yeah. People either think, well, God, no, God's really judgmental and wrathful, or God's all like, oh, it's, my compassion means I'm all wishy-washy with you. And help you justify avoidance but it's it's neither of those neither things. of those no yeah. love is a strong yeah. statement of truth you know yeah. always yeah. will be and you know if people look at some of the bible record which is a, quite accurate some in some places and um, you know where they see some of my very very strong statements that were mm -hmm. made to people who are out of harmony with love and who are in a state of resistance and um, they'll see that obviously if i'm if i'm expressing god's opinions here then obviously God must feel a very similar way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we've really just stated this, but God doesn't agree with my choice to damage others and the environment through my sin. He feels my sin and the desire to sin is evil and must be eradicated for the sake of happiness. That's right. So, and, and I want to use that word evil specifically because... Mm -hmm. You know, there are there is evil and it is created by humans. Mm. There is no such thing as a devil. There's mm. no such thing as a Satan. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as some fallen angel who created the so or is the source of all evil. Yeah. Evil has been is a human creation, just like addictions are a human creation mm. and sin is a human creation. Evil is a human creation and as such has to be eradicated by humans. Mm. And God makes us completely responsible for the eradication of evil. Yep. And, and any of us who have any courage to love have to stand up against evil. Yep. Now, we don't do it violently. You can't do it violently because then, then you become you'd be evil. evil. So, be sinning, so, yeah. but, but you can resist, mm -hmm. you, you know, in a, in a way, and I mean, stand in resistance. Um, and not engage or respond to or or agree with or pander mm. to the evil mm. you can and mm. and you need to learn to if you're going yeah. to have any relationship with god yes uh, you need to learn to yeah mm. yeah <laughs> and and i feel that um part of our desire is to give a demonstration of what that looks like because it that there are people who would say they are doing that who are actually full of anger and that's yeah. that's not doing it's it not either. the same it, no. it, it's like any person you can have a conversation about their evil and still love them yeah you can and yeah. you know frequently we do yes like uh, you know where people go away knowing well i was pretty firm yeah. with them about what evil they were doing yeah. while at the same time pretty straight with them about the fact that i cared about them yeah. and cared about what they're doing yeah. 
but I also cared about the person they were harming or yes. the people they were harming. Yeah. So and the evil they were committing, yeah. and that I couldn't agree with it and yeah. I couldn't support them with it. Yeah. So it's very important that people come to see that because that's how you stand up against evil. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, God does not have compassion for the fact that I caused pain in others, but does have compassion for those people that I cause pain to. That's right. Mm. So he's not going, oh, you're a poor person. You made all these other people feel bad. You know, <laughs> yeah. he's going, no, these poor other people who you made feel bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, God feels in response to the damage done to his other creations by my sin and desires to take actions to help others creations that I harm through my sin. Yeah, so this is where his compassion comes to play for the people I sin or the or, or the environment that I've sinned against. Mm. He, he, he is now doing more work to help that environment recover and help those people recover. He, he often sends his you know, spirits, so helping spirits, mm -hmm. to those people that you've harmed mm -hmm. and tr trying to help them see that the harm that you committed is not something that they deserved or something mm. that they, you know, want, you know, should have should have experienced mm. but something that it was done at your fault at your instigation mm -hmm. that try, he's trying to help other people see the truth about your sin yeah you know so most people who sin want to blame the other people for their sin so yeah. i'm angry because you did blah blah blah, mm -hmm. blah or mm -hmm. i i hit you in the face because you did such and such or whatever that this is all blaming other people for your sin and yeah. and god uh, in, what god does about those situations is goes to those other people and say no you're not to blame for that person's sin that person's sin is their choice their and and the consequences I'm going to deliver are on you know the law upon through them. the law yeah. uh, are upon them yeah. as a result of their choice and you're not to blame for their choice even if you were in a condition that attracted that particular mm. thing you're not to blame for mm. their choice to harm you mm. and and so you know there's no and, and we notice a lot of people who listen to divine truth use the law of attraction as a way of justifying their sin. They say, mm. oh, I could only hit you because you wanted to be hit. Type or thing. your condition or, allowed oh, it. Your condition yeah. allowed me to do yeah. that. And this kind, of, this kind of justification of sin is a terrible thing from God's perspective. He, yeah. he, he feels a lot of dislike for it. And, yes. uh, and, 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 and is trying to go to the other people and say, no, this is just a total crap that you're hearing yeah. now. <laughs> it's totally untrue. Yeah. You, you are never, no matter what your condition, you are never responsible for another person's choice to harm you. Mm. And, and, you know, these are the kinds of things that God is always trying to accomplish. And, and so when you think about it too, our sin creates work for God. Mm. Mm. And this is something we don't appreciate. Mm. When we sin... God, God is God now takes actions to try to make somebody else um, mm. understand that our sin is our is our choice, right? So and to remedy and he directs the his spirit friends sin. and other people to try to help that person who you harmed, yeah, to come to the conclusion that the sin was yours, yes, not not theirs. That they were harmed, and that they were harmed mm. by your sin, mm. and that the sin was yours, and the consequence for it should be yours too, mm. and that they didn't deserve what you did, mm. and and so we don't understand, and and this is why we understand. This is why repentance has to involve God about our sin because we don't understand the amount of work we've created. Mm by for, for the helping spirits in particular and and god who directs them mm. uh, for when we sin we so then naturally if all sin ceased there would logically be more resources of course there to would do be. more loving a huge more amount more of creative resources. and loving things yeah, yeah yeah a huge amount of resources would become available we've talked about in this i think this year or la early la last year or something we talked about you know the amount of children that are dying per year from from abortion and miscarriage right mm -hmm. and how the sin of our parents creates these particular problems right 250 mm -hmm. million or so children uh being having to be helped by spirits every year imagine if those 250 million children did not have to be helped mm. imagine that how much more resources would be available to do other good things yeah right not not just the recovery of something that was bad yes right so you can see straight away that um that obviously um our sin has consequences not only for ourselves and the people we harm but also for the people who are good mm. who are trying to negate or or correct uh, mm. the results of our sin 
right? Mm -hmm. So this is why we need to also understand that true forgiveness, uh, true repentance on our part involves understanding that actually we've created a lot of work for other people when we sin. Mm. Yeah. Because God's love is infinite, but the resources within our universe, even though our universe far exceeds what most of us can currently perceive, That's right. uh, it's still a finite, finite universe the finite, with finite yeah. resources. And, and in the it. very first instance in the human in the history of this of this planet, mm -hmm. the, the destruction of the human race's condition through sin got to the point where the very first people who passed over into the spirit world passed into the hells. Mm. They, and, and as a result, uh, it took many, many millennia for them to even get out of the hells into the six sphere condition. Mm -hmm. And one of the very first things they had to try to do was to try to help other people on earth to negate the condition. Mm. And so if you look at if you look at that historically, you can see a lot of the work that has has to be done or has been done mm -hmm. by spirits who have passed has been to try to negate the sin that the next generation commits. Yeah. And so, you know, we don't understand the full effects of our sin and, mm. and also the full consequences of our sin. Mm. And God expects us to. to mm. And if we tr did truly understand it, we would take a lot more responsibility for it and be a lot more careful about our choices and decisions. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So obviously so, God's feeling all of this, you know, God's feeling, yeah. no, hey, your sin's pretty bad. It has a lot of consequences that you do not understand mm. is what mm. God feels. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And God, is, so you've mentioned God expects me to take personal responsibility for my sin. Yes. In other words, like none of this minimization, justification, shifting the blame crap. <laughs> you know, none of this like stupid, stupid stuff that has no benefit to anybody. You know, he, he wants you to start standing up and be a be a man or a woman who takes responsibility for their life. Right. Yeah. And and he's not going to allow you to get away with not taking responsibility for what you create. Yeah. And every time you desire not to take responsibility for what you create, it's going to be a long the process of the law of conversation working upon you until you realize that you've got to take some responsibility for what you've done. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, God expects me to do everything I can to correct the results of my sin. So that's about trying to be self-responsible. Yeah, see, a person who's uh, drawn by the law of compensation into correcting sin is, is only doing what is necessary to correct yeah. their sin. What, what God loves is a person who recognizes their sin, recognizes what was done, and then desires to correct it yeah. through, through actions that they then take. Yes. This is a demonstration of repentance, actually. Mm -hmm. And that is a that is an important part of repentance. So, mm. so God's feelings are when we sin, he 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 would really like me now to do everything I possibly can to correct my sin. Yeah. And this is why a lot of our spirit friends in the spirit world who who were there, who uh, we met over the two thousand years of life, you know, some of them like you know Luther who created an alternate religion to the Catholic faith, you know, he he is trying to correct that mm. sin, you know, mm -hmm. not the sin of creating an alternate religion to the Catholic faith, but the sin of the false teachings involved in his religious faith. Yes. And he's still trying to do that to this day, even though he's completely happy. Yeah. He's still trying to take action to correct the sin mm. because he understands this, understa this feeling that God has. No, you created this faith. You need to take some steps to to remove it. remove the error that yeah, you, to remove create, the error that you, you created. put into the universe. Yeah, yeah it's there now and, yeah. and it's sitting there now and sure, God's laws eventually will destroy it. Mm -hmm. but, but it. But it can be helped by a person who created it saying, no, it's all wrong. Yeah. You know, and this yeah. is what Luther does. Yeah. So, so the, beauty, the beauty of that is that, you know, this expectation you can see is a strong expectation God has. And if you're connected with conscience, you'll feel it from God. Mm. No, you're going to have to take some responsibility for what you've done here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you, when you sell drugs, you're going to have to take some responsibility for what happened to those drugs and who imbibed them and what happened to them and what went on with those people mm -hmm. and how their lives were harmed by it. You're going to need yeah. to take some responsibility. Are you going to do something to fix that? Yes. What, what are you going to do to fix that? What actions are you going to take to fix that? Yeah. What personal responsibility are you going to take to improve the situation mm. for these particular people, not mm. make it worse? It's the same with everything on the planet. Yeah. 
all the people who produce alcohol. You're going to have to take some responsibility for the fact that there's a lot of drunkards out there who basically abuse their families and everything because they are, you know, Alcoholics. imbibing alcohol mm. all the time. And because you keep wanting to sell it and make money off of their, off of their pain, mm. you know, you're going to have to take some responsibility for that, you know. Mm. And, and so it goes on for every every area of human endeavor really you know yeah 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 absolutely mm. okay um and finally god will not assist in the removal of my pain and suffering caused by sin unless i forgive others for their sin towards me or repent for my own sin that's right yeah so the the remember the processes of forgiveness and repentance are voluntary and we, we, we're going to say this over and over again over the next yeah. few days, you know. So the voluntary process is so, so we can't expect that God's going to do something for us without our involvement here, yeah. right? Yeah. That's what the law of compensation is for, us yeah. refusing to be involved and being forced into the recognition. Mm -hmm. That's what it's for. Mm -hmm. The laws of revol revolving around forgiveness and repentance all involve our voluntary action yep. and our desire to act. And, and, you know, eventually every person who goes through the law of compensation for a period of time gets to the point where they start to go, want to go through repentance, yeah. where they want to correct their own actions mm. uh, voluntarily and with desire. Mm. 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 Yeah. So it's quite very clear good. from that that God feels very strongly about sin. And my personal desire to and sin. And my personal desire yeah. to sin very strongly about my personal desire to sin. Mm. He, he is very concerned about every personal desire inside of us that causes us to desire sin. Yeah. So, you know, he feels very strongly about it and we need to understand the strength of his feelings. Yes. He's passionate about the fact that we shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and passionate about the fact that we, we need to uh, understand its cause. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And do something about its cause. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And God's going to really... in ensure that we must do that at some point in our yes. future yes yeah. Yeah. yeah it's unavoidable yeah and uh, we might as well engage it as soon as yeah. we can rather than leave it as long as we can yes and again god has this sense of dislike and displeasure that is not mutually exclusive from god's love and compassion that's right it's just a sense of I do not agree with sin and I yeah. will not support you in, in yeah. any way. When you, yeah. It's really interesting when you start connecting a spirit, uh, for example, who's sinned and not being connected to God, to God's feelings about what they've done. Because mm. when they start feeling God's feelings through the conscious mechanism about what they've done, mm. uh, it, like they're often shocked and, and so distressed about the feeling they feel from mm. God about how bad it is. Mm. And, and yeah, the, God, God's feelings about some of these things are intense dislike mm. of, of them. Mm. And, and although he's not going to punish you further and make your life more difficult and attack you and be violent with you, mm. at the end of the day, he does have an intense delight, dislike of what we choose to do when it comes to sin. Yeah, mm. yeah.